Just taking a look at the overall form factor of this PC and the fact that it can play these games up to 1440p is really awesome. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a small form factor gaming PC that can basically play any AAA game. Now what I've got on the table here might not look like enough to go ahead and build a PC, but I've got a little bit of a secret weapon. Inside of this box is the all-new Menace Forum AR900i. If you're familiar with Menace Forum, you know they mainly focus on mini PCs, but recently they've released some really awesome mini ITX motherboards with CPUs ready to go installed, and that's exactly what we have here with the new AR900i. Mini ITX form factor, we've also got our CPU cooler, and this one just happens to have an Intel Core i9 13900HX, 24 cores, 32 threads, and a max turbo up to 5.4 gigahertz. As you can see, we're still going to need RAM, storage, and a power supply. You can use any kind of ATX power supply or SFX if you want to. This does use SODEM RAM, and one thing to keep in mind is this i9-13900HX is actually a mobile CPU, but with this board, we do get a PCIe 5.0 X16 slot, so we can easily add a powerful GPU to a small form factor build. They've also added four NVMe M.2 slots, so we can add a ton of storage to this board, and they've kept it in that mini ITX form factor. So again, basically what we're getting here is the motherboard. We've also got our cooler and our CPU ready to go with these new motherboards that Minus Forum is putting out. So in this video, we're going to be building a small form factor gaming PC with the new AR900i. I've also got a 650 watt flex fully modular power supply so to fit inside of this case, a one terabyte NVMe SSD and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4800 mega transfers per second. And as for the case, it's kind of an off brand. I've seen it by RG. It'll support a micro ATX or mini ITX. It's a little taller than I'd like, but I think this should fit in here quite nicely and I was able to keep the price down with this. Assembling the AR900i is super easy. We've just installed that SODEM RAM. Now we need to go with our SSD. It's got a pretty beefy cooler here, as you can see, with a built-in fan, so we can go with those really fast 4.0 drives and not worry about them overheating. And of course, we've got two M.2 slots here, and around back of the motherboard, there's two more, so we can add a total of four NVMe drives to this. That way, you can add a ton of storage to a little board like this. One thing that this motherboard doesn't come with is a cooling fan, so you will have to add your own. You can go with a low profile, but I've got enough room in this case. I'm just going to go with a 120 millimeter fan here. It's going to allow me to get enough air over that heat sink, and hopefully we can suck more in to keep it nice and chilly. So again, kind of an off-brand case here, and you will need a flex power supply. I just had this one. I actually bought two of them for some builds that I did in the past. I figured I'd go ahead and reuse one of them. 650 watts, personally, I don't think it will put out 650 watts. It was a bit cheaper, but there's several listed over on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description in case you want to build something like this. But the motherboard fits in here really nicely. Obviously, we've got a lot more room than we need with this, but small form factor mini ITX cases that support a dual slot GPU are kind of hard to come by. You can pick a bump on AliExpress, but they take forever to ship. So I figured I'd go with this because it is readily available over on Amazon. And speaking of a low profile dual slot GPU, we've got the Gigabyte RTX 4060 low profile. You will need one eight pin connector here. And that's actually one of the big reasons I opted to get this power supply. It is modular and it's actually got two eight pin PCIe connectors. We only need one for this low profile RTX 4060, but uh, we should have plenty of power here for everything we need. And once it's all assembled, minus that side panel, looks a little something like this. Now, I do think it turned out really nice. Kind of wish it was a bit smaller. I mean, it's still a small form factor case when you compare it to, you know, larger PCs on the market. And given the parts used here, I think we're going to see some really awesome gaming performance out of this mini PC. So going into this, I wasn't sure how well this 13900HX would perform, but I'm kind of blown away by what they've done here. The built-in cooler we're using does an amazing job, and this is actually set up at a very high wattage, given that we have that HX variant. As you can see, 13th gen. I've done 32 gigs of DDR5 at 4800. I think we could go up to 52 with this, but I'm just going to leave it right here. And of course, we've got that RTX 4060 low profile with 8 gigs of RAM. Now over here, I've got core temp. This is going to give us our total TDP right here. Oh, we've got our temps listed for all of the cores. With CPU-Z, I'm just going to put 100% load on all of those cores. This jumps up to 120 watts. 
and if I leave it here for an extended period of time, I've seen it jump up to around 80 something, but over here you can see that our max hasn't even reached 80. And it's gonna depend on the fan you use. I'm actually glad I used this thicker 120 millimeter. And with this, I haven't even gone into the BIOS and messed around with the fan curve. So we're sitting pretty nice here. I mean, we've got a continuous 120 watts with this CPU. But now it's time to get into some performance testing. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this. And the first one here is Geekbench 6, single core 2,860, multi 18,443. I can definitely see that that 120 watts is helping out with all of these cores here. That multi-core is absolutely amazing for a mobile chip. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we've got 3D Mark Firestrike, a very strong 25,196. Time Spy came in with an 11,081. And since we've got an RTX card, I figured I'd go ahead and test out a ray tracing benchmark. We've got Port Royal with a 6,143. If you're looking for some extreme ray tracing performance, the RTX 4060 kind of falls flat, but I personally love this low profile version. In my opinion, it's the best low profile dual slot card you can buy right now. And I'll show you why. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high with no DLSS. We don't need any kind of resolution scale here at 1440p, maxed out. We're getting an average of 91 FPS with this game, and I've always had really good luck with the RTX 4060 in this one. As you can see, it is very, very playable here. And if you take a look up in the left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. At the very bottom, we've got that CPU package power. We're sitting right up to around 78 watts in some cases with this game. It will be more or less with others. And when it comes, and when it comes to that low profile RTX 4060, we're averaging around 112 watts from that. This mini gaming build handles Forza Horizon 5 like a champ. We're at extreme settings, 1440p with no resolution scale, getting an average of around 94 FPS. Of course, we've still got DLSS that we can access. We can take this way up. I mean, taking DLSS to balance will net us around 130 FPS with it set up like this. But the way I look at it is this GPU is already handling it well over 60. I'm totally fine with the way it's running right now. I don't actually need any extra out of this. Here's Mortal Kombat 1, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on because I've actually tested this game in the past with the RTX 4060, and we were at a steady 60 FPS with no DLSS, 1440p, high settings. Unfortunately, going into this one, even if I took it down to 1080p, I was still getting those dips that you're seeing under 60. I don't know if it's shader cache or not, I probably should have cleared it out and let it recache everything, but I just let it do what it was going to do just to show you what was going on. God of War, 1440p, ultra settings. I thought we'd be able to do this with no DLSS, but I did have to enable a little bit here. We went to quality, and now we're getting an average of around 78 FPS. Before, we did have those dips under 60 at 1440, ultra, no DLSS. So some of these games, you know, at 1440 with the 4060, you will need to enable some resolution scale. I wanted to test out Shadow of the Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark. 1440p, very high settings, no resolution scale, average of 97 FPS. And I know it's an older one. This is one that a lot of people do like to benchmark. And the RTX 4060 in this little setup can handle it just fine. And of course, I had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, ultra settings, no DLSS. In order to take this up to 1440p, you will need to set DLSS to at least performance there. Still looks pretty good, but you know, given what we've got here, I wanted to run no resolution scale. And in my opinion, it still looks really, really good. When it comes to total system power consumption, it's definitely going to pull a lot more than a mini PC with integrated graphics. We've got that dedicated GPU, and remember that 13900HX does go up to 120 watts. At idle, this is pulling around 42 watts. I'm using a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall with all of my testing. Average gaming, it jumps up to 231, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 337 watts. Now I'm sure we could get more out of this. I could go into the BIOS and up the TDP on the CPU, also overclock the GPU, but the way it's set up like it is right now, not too bad. It's pulling a lot less than larger PCs. Overall, loving the performance this thing's put now. It would have been nice to have a smaller case, but uh, like I mentioned, it is kind of hard to find those uh, mini ITX cases that'll support a dual slot low profile card. 
You can get them on AliExpress. I've done a few videos, but something's going on right now because shipping is absolutely ridiculous. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick up this cheaper case on Amazon, which was readily available. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links to everything I used in the description below. And the Menace Forum AR900i is actually great for even larger builds. It's really up to you. So if you want to learn a little more or get one of those, I'll leave links to their official website in the description. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this rig, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.